Alrighty then, it's time for a new new game, and as you can see by the length of this game, you're in for some shit. This one, and my god, is there shit to behold. And yes, it's platinum, and it's ranked solo queue. And I just gotta say this, you know, everybody always asks, where's Elo Hell, Stonewall? What division is it? You know what? All ranked is Elo Hell. Everything, including Diamond. You'll always go through Hell, whether it's your own fault or your teammates' fault or something stupid happening, like a DC or whatever. So, okay, Runes Mastery, it doesn't matter? No, because you're gonna suffer with me. Like, it doesn't matter what I took, but still, you're gonna want to know anyways. 4, 5, 21, and... Attack speed, red, attack speed, quince, army yellow, and cooldown blues. That's kind of it, because I just didn't have the right rune set up for Nunu, but I wanted to pick him anyways. So as you can see, my mid laner already died. I go top lane to help Nessus kill the poppy, so Nessus can have some leeway here. And unfortunately, Lee Sin pops up and starts kicking her ass. Uh, he jumps in, punches him in nuts, and he actually is going to be able to kill Nessus right here with, uh, with a hot token. Well, not the game, just just a punch and then chase after me. Either way, though, as you can see, it's already bad. But I don't lose hope completely yet. I know that if, well, I don't know about Annie, but or at least at that moment, I didn't know to trust Annie. Uh, I figure, you know, if we can make it to the late game with Nasus and Kogma, maybe we can do well. But I'm very afraid of. Tristana and Poppy getting late game. By the way, you know what I just said about trusting uh, this Annie? Not at all. She's gonna die again and again and again. So just, just watch. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. So either way, a lot of players have been asking me two questions that I actually end up fulfilling. Actually, multiple questions are fulfilled in this game. One, Stonewall, how do you recover from the jungle? You're gonna see that here. Just in general, if your ganks aren't working out well, it's you got two choices. Try to perform more ganks, even if they start becoming very, very desperate. And even if they don't exactly work off on a one for uh, a perfect trade-off. Here, I was hoping the ending didn't die, but it, and it was kind of a forced gank. Unfortunately, she died, but at least I got a shutdown gold. So the other option is to just completely control the map. Like, put down wards and everything to at least prohibit the enemy team from getting more ahead than they already are. So... Let's say you're Nunu and your opponent uh, completely blam and butt blasts your teammates. What you could do is ward everything and keep the enemy jungler away. So at least, even though they got one or two kills, they won't get any more kills beyond that. Because there's no other way you could stop them. So uh, The other way is just to wait for team fights and to hope for the best. Which is also something I'm going to have to be forced to do, it, to do here. The other one is, Stonewall, what do you do with Sightstone as, as a jungler? In, I've, in pre-made games with friends, if I was playing Nunu or someone that gets a Sightstone, I would put them in places that are important. By the way, you see Annie die yet again. Uh, put them in places that are important, like the enemy, deep into the enemy jungle so my teammates can have a, a bigger heads up of when they're going to be ganked. And by the way, Ness is about to be ganked too right now. And there's nothing I could have done about that. So, uh... But in solo queue, what I use the wards is for two things. One, it's kind of to protect my advance. Like if I'm going to walk into the enemy jungle or into the bush, I'll put it in front of me so I don't walk into something stupid and die. Or if I'm chasing and I need to plop it down so I can keep targeting them with snowball or something, that too. The other one is just put it anywhere in the general area that I'm at. And you'll see me do this a lot. Let's say I go down bottom lane, I'll put two wards along there just so I can sort of... Uh, see where the enemy if the enemy team is going to respond to me or if they know i'm coming so or that I, if they know i'm in there so i can see the path they're taking and sort of try to avoid them or whatever so uh thankfully the leblanc got killed here so the enemy isn't going to be completely behind i mean she already is behind but damn we still have a good chance here this is the other thing you can do to uh much you call it, recover from the jungle. And though it also kind of is the same thing as taking control of the map. If you see a lane that can be pushed, go take it. Go take under, take it and push it down and finish it. Or, let's say your teammate needs to go back, go and take care of the lane for them so they don't lose a tower or anything. Keep control of the flow of the game. Because, let's say top lane gets a kill, top lane Riven got a kill on your Nasus, and your Nasus is getting punished here and there, and he has to go back. Go top lane, protect it for him, and make sure it doesn't fall, so, you know, so Nasus can continue farming, because if, if the Riven was smart, she would push down the tower, 
or make sure or control the lane in a way in which the Nasus won't get any form. Something like that. Like if the tower falls, NASA has no safety, etc. etc. Et you on them, that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of being being the little cheerleader for the team, being there to service everybody. On your knees servicing everybody. So yeah, the game is bad. It's it's not as it's not derailing as bad as you might have thought from the if, from the beginning instances, but well actually yeah it is kind of you mean Annie has five deaths already before fourteen minutes, but fortunately for me the NASs is, is CS is I mean Q stacks are actually going to be massive. You'll see that come into play soon in the team fights, and as you can see I'm walking around trying to find any wards and trying to plop down things to sort of show my presence. I'm trying to figure out where their wards are by seeing how they react to me. Like if you go into the mid lane and the LeBlanc skirts away. By the way, I don't get what the fuck this was. It's like, Annie, why are you here? You saw the Lee Sin come up to you. And then what, I, he thought it was a bait or something. He was like, eh, this Annie's not reacting. I, I have a feeling it's a bait. And then when he realized it's not a bait, he just went up and tried to kill her. Unfortunately, uh, the Lee Sin gets to fucking survive because he's going to... He's like Jesus this entire game. He's never going to die. Uh, fortunately, LeBlanc screws up her blink. Gets killed right now by me and Kogma. Snowball to the face. Kogma picks it up. And that's it. We traded one for one. But it's kind of worthless. I don't know what the fuck the Annie was doing. So now she's got six deaths. Unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately. It's getting to the point where. The Leblanc can one shot my teammates. So the whole idea of me picking Nunu. Was to buff Kogma. And slow the enemy team down. And just kind of be the protector right. Well, that thing is a moot point if I can't actually protect Kogma from a 100% combo. And even if we manage to get to the point where LeBlanc might not be useful, that means we're delaying the game. So Poppy is going to become a menace. So it's like right now, like during this time of the game, I'm just biting my hands, just being all panicky. He's like, fuck, what am I going to do? So I, the best thing I could possibly do is just build as many auras as I can and some other extra ability kind of thing. So I'm building, I built Juggernaut for the cooldown and the health. I built Glacier Shroud again for the cooldown, mostly so it can be spammy and have blood boil up pretty much 100% of the time. And I'm going to be building uh, Locket of the Iron Solari and then the Frozen Fist just to provide more slowness. I was thinking of Righteous Glory, but... I only purchased that on Nunu if I was sort of ahead, just so I can continuously be a dick and just sustain myself forever and never go home. The other Nunu game I uploaded a while back has me buying Righteous Glory first, especially with the Catalyst of the Protector. And it's stupid. Like, I go home with like 3,500 health because I just never had to go home thanks to the Catalyst passive. Uh, that said, anyways, we're only a third done with this game. This shit, or this video, I mean, this this is fucking crazy. So, it's kind of like, it's kind of like sad, really. Like, look, again, the Annie dies again for free. And it's going to happen again and again. Either way, at least, thankfully, the enemy team kind of understands to respect my authority here. Nunu, Nunu and Kogma versus Zillian and Tristana would be deep in my favor. But again, look. It's just kind of sad. The, the Nasus here has no chance of escaping, and they're just sort of waiting on their cooldowns to execute him, and they just flee. It's just like, I have very little hope that the Poppy is not going to wreck our faces, and that the Lee Sin getting so huge is... Uh, Lee Sin and LeBlanc getting so huge isn't just going to result in Karma dying in every single fight before I get to unleash him with Blood Boy and protect him. But I will try my best, or at least, I mean, in this game, I am trying my best, because I don't want to lose, because I, I thought to myself, if I lost this game, my account with a K, after just winning it, I, it's freedom from the hell it's been on for a month. Who oh boy. So watch this. I, I have no goddamn words for this, okay? I have no words. Just, okay, keep watching. That, that's a miss. It's like, in, nowhere, in, that, in that time, did they kind of realize that it was a terrible idea? Like, even if she had been stunned, the chances of other people showing up were huge. Even if she were to go straight into their faces, the chances of LeBlanc just killing them before they, she gets dropped herself were too huge. 
And here, unfortunately, I only managed to kill Lee Sin, and Nasus gets killed, and I run for my life, and they give chase, and I, and I bring him out to my, my wraiths. Come, come, follow me, Tristana. I'm gonna eat myself a wraith, survive. I'm actually getting pinged by the enemy, uh, the enemy. Turn around, turn around, turn around. I'm like, the fuck? I just throw one snowball and walk away, but thinking that Kogma wouldn't be able to catch her, I go up and smite killer. And then, of course, I get dropped. I didn't think Lanf was still here. And I, I thought Zillion would take too long to kill me, so hopefully Kogma would pick him off. Unfortunately, Kogma gets killed by Poppy and the LeBlanc, so now she has 10 goddamn kills. She's gonna annihilate my team. And on the you know on the counter opposite of her, it's the the Annie having eight deaths. So right now the enemy team has double our kills, but for, fortunately, well we didn't know at the time at least, not as much gold as us. That's what surprised me in looking at this replay. But yeah, even me, my fat little yeti self, still gets chunked by these dudes. I mean, and especially considering we don't have any true initiation, we're going to have to t sort of initiate with our face. And here I'm actually telling Nasus, don't do this, I don't have smite, and of course it gets stolen without really any effort. Fortunately for us, they get it very real aggro and very stupid, and they end up just giving us two kills for free. I don't know what the hell the benefit of kicking me there was, because there was obviously no way I was going to die quickly, and even if I did die, I was like the least, more, least valuable target of those guys there. And of course, the Zillion just kind of waltzed in and died too, so... Thanks to that, we were also able to get a tower, so despite the fact that we lost Dragon, that really, really dumb play from the enemy team got us a kill. Also, it just died right there, it's kind of sad. Everything is going to blow me up now. My my best chance is to protect the Kog'Maw, and again, and make sure our late game dominates. But again, their late game is probably just, if not scarier than us. And again, the scariest uh, teammate we have right now is Annie. Because we don't know if she's going to do something proper or if she's going to die again. It's all—it's kind of a weird thing. In this game, it all hinges on the Annie not killing herself somehow. And of course, as you've seen eight times already, that's not going to happen. In fact, I actually had to ping Annie and tell her to come get the blue. Because she was just kind of wandering around. It's like, come get your buff. I'm trying to give it to you. I know. Normally, I would just take the blue for myself, but at this point, I have 40% cooldown. It's kind of a dumb it's a dumb thing to do. Also, Poppy still a red, and this red is actually going to bite us in the ass. You'll see. It's kind of kind of sad for me, really. The enemy gets in close. I believe we, um, we're told to turn around. Come on. Do, do, do something. Yeah, we're pinging. We go up to them, and then the fight breaks out. Or the fight slowly still going to break out. Yeah, LeBlanc goes in. We get mega chunked. I get caught. So I get caught. I get chunked up, uh, even further, but not enough to be dropped. Uh, and he just dumps the bear on top of LeBlanc. And Ness just destroys it with his Q. And you can see Ness's Q is going to go crazy. Poppy jumps right on top of Kogma. And for some reason decided to use her ultimate on, on Leona and get herself ass stunned. And here, I would have survived. I would have survived if it wasn't for the red buff. That's what I mean. It bit me in the ass that he got stolen. It would have been like a cool play, you know, like, slow her down for the Kog'Maw to kill her and then flash away so I survive. Nope, red buff killed me. So, my god, this is, this is platinum, okay? This is platinum. This is kind of hell one player goes through. And I would like to say that, you know... Uh, the enemy team played well because honestly they're not bad. So I'm not insulting anybody of the uh, anybody of the enemy team except that one decision Lee Sin made for some goddamn reason. Also here I don't know why Leona didn't turn around and sort of fight because we had Kogma. They had two dudes who were massively weak and I was incoming. LeBlanc would just die to one spittoon and the uh and what's her face Tristana would just get torn to pieces. It was kind of dumb. Either way, as I was saying. The enemy team is proper, aside from some bad plays here and there. I think that, but I honestly think if the my any teammate wasn't uh, short bus commando, he if he wasn't a short bus commando, we probably would have had this game in the bag a lot sooner. Though honestly, the mistake of top lane during the early one by me to sort of force a gank against the poppy was a mistake. Here, fight breaks out again. They don't kill me. I just kind of waddle away. I use my ultimate, but of course, it doesn't come to any effect. I kind of realize real quickly that I'm trying to use my ultimate. <sighs> Sorry for this yawn. It is already 15 minutes into the video, and I still have 10 minutes to go. It kind of wears you out, especially when you wake up very early, very early in the morning to voice it. Otherwise, you can see, 
Nasus is king god. Nasus of destruction. And he's just going to one-shot everything. Well, not one-shot, but partially one-shot everything. We secure a dragon this time because we actually wait for my summoner spells. And we... I don't know. I mean, Lee Sin. Just Remember when I said Lee Sin is Jesus? Look at that. He, he skirts off. He survives. My god, there's really nothing I can do here. But either way... The other thing about jungle recovery or about recovery in general, you have to have an anchor teammate. I, I've been saying it over and over. I need to rely on my Kog'Maw teammate, and in this case now Nasus, in order to win this. Everything I do or everything I build has to sort of impact a way of amplifying Kog'Maw's survivability and potential to kill things. So if I have a choice between building a damage item or an aura that supports the... Uh, Cogwell's ability to survive, I must buy it. Like, if if the enemy team was very quick in mo uh, movement speed, I could consider Righteous Glory just to make it survive. The enemy team heavy in attack speed, Frozen Heart, though, honestly, that would help. Honestly, in this one, too, I was thinking to myself, it wouldn't be the best item to build. By the way, I'm actually going to rewind this. It's, it's just too fucking silly. Look at this. So there's a bomb on the minion and you can see it and she walks right up to it and dies. Oh god. By the way, I was actually thinking of Stark's Fervor or whatever it's called now. I forgot, I haven't seen it. Zeke's Herald, there we go. I was actually thinking about Zeke's Herald this game just to help out the Kog'Maw on the Nasus, even though it wouldn't be as effective on Nasus or as effective on anybody else. I was thinking, I really need to make Kog'Maw indep independently strong, especially considering that my ability to shut down Poppy is dwindling as she gets stronger and stronger. So there's panic setting in. It's that uh, we're, we can't definitively win team fights. We kill maybe one or two people, but we just can't finish them all off. It has to require a huge mistake from their part. Fortunately, that huge mistake is right now. They sort of just, the Poppy just sort of like uses her ultimate on me and then she realized, she should have realized, I have a lot of slows for, uh, poor, like I, I use my ultimate, but I immediately get kicked by the Lee Sin, so that ultimate's pretty useless. But still, the slows kind of hurt the Poppy enough, and also the help of Leona helped tremendously. Enough for the Kog'Maw to at least survive with a sliver of health. I think if the Poppy got a few more hits in, uh, if, could, since, if she wasn't slow, she might have gotten enough hits in to kill, finish off the Kog'Maw. And thanks to that, it gives us our first definitive kill. We wipe every one of them out. Though it takes a while to, you know, chase them and slowly beat them to death with our noodly arms. And as a result, we are also able to get Baron. And this is the huge turning point for the team. We're still not really sure if we can win. It's really bad for us because Poppy, she's just getting to that point. And as you can see by the fact that there's 8 minutes left in this game, that point of Poppy is going to be made. Uh... I bet, as you can see, Sidestone is still there, Lock of the Iron Solari, my next item is the Frozen Fist. Again, everything to, su everything to support Kog'Ma, but uh, not to go over the cooldown reduction thing. We chase them down, we end up ki managing to kill the Tristana, but unfortunately for us, she's being revived and she gets to go through the gates and survive. Okay, Zillion... The enemy team just has too much crap that's going to make killing them really hard. Like if she, if Zillion ults the Poppy and gives her the speedy up boost of death, we're fucked. I'm surprised she had, they haven't really done that. The, the, the His pa, ultimate has gone more like Lee Sin and Tristana. Though Tristana's a smart idea. I don't think so in LeBlanc at this point. We pick a little fight with them. It real, Nothing really comes of it. Well, sort of, Lee Sin jumps in. Actually, no, something really is going to come out of it. Poppy finally realizes I shouldn't ult some but one of the supports and ends up going straight at the Kog'Maw. As you can see, there's nothing I can do to stop her. Kog'Maw should have run into the bush early just to lose some line of sight, put her in line of sight, and maybe shrug off some damage and survive long enough for the ultimate to wear off. But unfortunately, it didn't work. And right then and there, I was contemplating. Even though it would be pretty weak at this point, Righteous Glory would definitely help out this Kog'Maw. Because there's no way I could protect them against the Pop. I mean, the Poppy, yes, that's the name. Oh boy. Nightmare game ensues. As you can see, the Annie kind of just went away. She's actually yelling at us at this point. Why did you fight without me? Well, we, we kind of tried just to secure the map and... 
shoot at them. We didn't think they were going to go for a full-on brawl. Either way, the Poppy, I mean not the Poppy, the Annie is able to slaughter the enemy team if she actually gets a good ultimate on. So we're really, in a weird way, our biggest feeder is our biggest tool of actually winning this game. So, like, well, yeah, tool or enabler. She goes in and ults two people, and this is exactly what I mean. Despite the fact that she fed harder than the Red Cross in an you know, African jungle or some shit. I don't know, that's a bad joke. She, that ultimate kind of helps set off, you know, the... I guess the tower taking and the inhibitor taking and the sort of comeback here. So it just goes to show even if your teammate sucks and feeds a lot, they can still contribute if you believe in them or at least if they believe in them. I don't know, that's stupid. I don't know where I'm going with this. If they don't fuck up, that's probably a better thing to say. Unfortunately, again, the poppy cannot be stopped and goes in and sodomizes Cogwell up against a wall. So once again, we're back to square one. And square one is running for our goddamn lives. It's, it's kind of, it, this game just had me so worried. They have more kills than us. And again, at that time, I just thought that, man, they had an astronomically larger amount of gold. And they have the potential to just murder the only person here who's able to probably carry the day. Kogma. Nasus can break faces, but he can be kited. He can be uh, done in. He's going to be mostly our big old sponge who occasionally uh, bitch slaps somebody. Cogmo is going to be our artillery fire. And hopefully, like, and there's nothing we can really do to protect him aside from the poppy fucking up some way. So, team group, so, well, like, we're pinging each other, well, or at least telling each other to group the fuck up so we can take a tower. Lee Sin goes in, kicks Annie in the face, which, again, I figure is a dumbass mistake because now she's got, like, a full-on you know, blast range of the two more important targets, and she gets to survive this. And it's like, Lee Sin, you're being a little too ambitious here. That kick got two members killed. It got him killed. It didn't get Tristana killed, unfortunately. And... Fortunately for us, I mean, Kagawa does get dropped, but we get to drop the LeBlanc and the Poppy is just sort of trying her best. Well, she kills the enemy, but she's trying her best to save the day. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter. With the inhibitor, we go towards top lane and we're going to take the tower tower as well. We've essentially gained control of the map. The side stone is no longer as useful, but I might as well not drop it, right? Just spam the void wherever I go. Uh, so now I buy myself in it. No, I haven't actually bought myself an elixir yet. The elixir comes later. Here we go. It's time for the Baron fights. We, thanks to the side stone, I'm able just to poo side stones, I mean, wards everywhere. I, I'm trying to harass the enemy players just to sort of shoo them off. In fact, that's going to become very important. I have the red trinket. And we're for scouting for enemy wards. We, they, we didn't see them put, uh, put any. Except right here. So we are certain the barren area is not warded except around blue. As you can see, we're just taking care of them all. Nasa and Nasus gives chase. Their abilities are, are burned. I believe Zillion's flash is gone too. So I like the for right now, barren is secure. We don't get to kill. The, well, the LeBlanc kind of ports back and gets kind of bomb blasted for being dumb. She still ends up being able to kill the Kog'Maw. Poppy comes in and starts rolling the faces once again. Fortunately, she used her thing on me, so I get to at least try to slow her down. Fortunately, she still ends up killing the Annie. So, yeah, sh fuck this shit, really. She ends up flashing over the wall to survive, and there's nothing we can do. But at least we get Dragon. Again, we just cannot get cons consistent... Uh, definitive wins they're all tiny victories and they don't really get us anywhere because the poppy still gets to tear people apart right now we're only able to stand up to them because the enemy team is disorganized and i guess on drugs or something we group up we finally group up and as again we just clear every ward they have and we realize they have no wards and i knew zillion was going to try to plop down one so i go after him and i chase him as much as i can i want to keep him away from the baron so he would be discouraged from warding now none of them none of them are, ha are in any position to ward because if they do they'd probably come in and die they don't really either have wards or they don't have any worthwhile things to plop down so 
we get an easy Baron. Zillion was their only hope of gaining vision, and he was shooed away. So I think that was a good decision by me. Hooray, me. Now for the for another attempt at a push and another hopeful that Poppy fucks up. Unfortunately, unfortunately she does. She uses her ultimate on Nasus, who hasn't used the Wither yet. So right now the Poppy is moving at the pace of a goddamn snail, and Kogma gets just to walk away. So effectively, half of Poppy's ultimate is used up, and she's not able to slow down anybody. And as soon as it ends, her life ends along with it. Kogma, along with the snowballs and the blood boy, will get to tear through her to pieces. Of course, the ending picks up the kill. Masses gets to survive, and Lee Sin doesn't. He just drops right down soon enough. And LeBlanc follows her friends to hell. So, thankfully, Poppy's massive fuck up there, the Baron that we got, managed to turn this whole damn thing around and we finally win. I really hope I never have to voice a game this goddamn long.